Hello and welcome um, once again on this Monday afternoon. It's a bit dreary outside, but it doesn't matter because it's Christmas and I can officially start being a bit more festive. So I'll introduce myself first. My name's Simon Williamson and I'm here from the Avago Ink Design. Um, and I'm here to give you some lovely inspiration using the Avago products and I've actually borrowed some SBM products as well. So um, to give you some kind of festive um, card ideas. So I can see lots of people have already joined on at the moment. So let's have a little quick look. So hi, Carol and Tracy. Uh, Roxy Lee's on. Um, I saw somebody else. Royal Roxanne. Uh, if I miss anybody else, I do apologise because it is moving quite fast. But yeah, so we're here for another Monday of crafting sessions. And the first thing I want to do is I want to announce the winner from the giveaway that we did last week. And that was for a, a massive um, package of £150 worth of crafting goodies from the Avago and Stats by Me range. And the winner for that draw was Sharon Williams from Tunbridge. So, well done, Sharon. I hopefully you'll be on today um, to drop us a comment. But if not, please um, drop us a message and we can arrange that to be posted out for you. So, well done to Sharon. And um, let's get going with this first demonstration. So, because it's Christmas, as you've obviously noticed, I thought I'd do some Christmas themed kind of um, demos over the next couple of weeks, just to give you some inspiration if you're trying to put together some last minute Christmas makes. The first one I've got for you, which is really unusual, is a tea light card cover. So, I'm not sure if you're able to see the flickering flame, but you can use one of these battery operated ones. Don't use a, a real one because it is hazardous. And then you can see we've used this lovely snowflake design. And we can make that three dimensional. So, IPX was from Simon. And I've got the little owls on this because I thought they'd be really good at this time of year. Look, keeping warm. It's just a really cute idea. Make it three dimensional. We can also make it flat for postage, which I'll show you how to do. So let's get started. It's really fast, this one, I promise you. It's that. Emma says, Light my heart. Well, you've got to wear a Christmas hat, haven't you, at this time of year? So we're going to start off with just a piece of blue card. And I've got the snowflake inner, and I've got the outermost outer ones there is like a, another layer i've gone for the the widest one i so pop that there i'm gonna get a little bit of masking tape oh it's very blue themed today isn't it even the tape's blue just give that a tack down there and the same at this side so it doesn't move i'm just going to put a slight shim on there just to make sure it cuts all the detail out We'll just pop that through. I do like this um, snowflake die. I think it's really handy. But it's even make them um, like bulbs to go on your tree as well with it. There. Oh, it's a lovely pattern on there. Trying to find my sticky tape. It's really pushed it down. <laughs> I don't think it needed the shim, but it's best to be safe, isn't it? Release it on that side. There we go. I'm just going to move it out of the way. I'm going to brush those up. I'm going to need this plate in a second. Here we go. Look at that as well. That'll make a lovely card out. It's in Boston to that craft card stock. That'll make a really nice second technique, wouldn't it? I'm going to save that so I might use that. Okay, so the second part, I'm going to use the outer now. And I'm just going to pinch a piece of blue vellum. I'm going to pop that on top. Make sure that fits where we need it. And I'm going to pop that through. I'm not going to put a shim onto this one because it's so fine. I think we'll be absolutely fine with this one without it. So, Roxalee says, I was making Christmas cards with my dino's elephants last night. I know, well, 
you keep um, keep tuned for the second demo because the elephants had to get involved with Christmas. Move that bit out of the way. I do like Christmas though, it's um, just nice thing to put some festive music on, sit down, craft and make presents and gifts for your friends and um, loved ones. Right, so we've got us vellum and we've got our card layer. So we're going to use some glue around this edge. Now I'm not too bothered about putting glue in the centre. I'm just going to make sure I've got it on this thicker area here. So I'm just going to try and get this to come out. I think I need a workout for this at this time of year. I'll just use the perky tool. And if it does come out a little bit too much, it will dry clear, so don't worry. I just want to go around all those edges with a fine bead of glue. And then we can put our vellum piece straight onto the back and it'll line up with the exact same shape we've cut for the outer of the blue so it's easy to line up and the best way i've found to do this is then push outwards and then that way you're not going to push the glue into the center of your design get that nice push words there we go turn that out so you can see there already we've got a nice little panel and we've got that kind of ability to put like um, something glowing behind it and it's quite transparent so that's one of them and then while we've got it in this position let's put a few little gems on to give it a little bit more sparkle so i'm going to use these clear ones from the stamps by me we'll put one in the center i'm just going to pick out a shape that I can carry all the way around. So I'm going to use these like diamonds. We'll just pop a little gem into the middle of each diamond. I think that's the last one. We'll give them a good push down. And then to make this stand up, you can do it this way, but it's only got one support. So I think the better way to do it is to actually turn it so it's got two feet that way. And then these bits are where we're going to actually going to be joining the design. So if you can see here, there's like a line that we can use as a bend line. So I'm going to use that as the bend line. And quite simply, I'm just going to just roll that over and give that a crease. So that way you can see it probably better. The same, so I'm going to make one there. And we'll turn it around and do the same. Oops, let's get that. Same on the opposite side. So I'm just going to push that up. You're going to make a panel like that. Now I've got another two panels I've already made. I'm going to do exactly the same to these. Crease that over. Crease that over. Turn that around. There we go. And these are the bits now that we're going to attach so we can glue all them up one by one. Let some glue on them and secure that. Um, probably not as much glue as that, but <laughs> just take a little bit of that off. The scrapper card. There we go. I can keep them flat, give that a bit of a push together. Use the excess glue on this one. Push that together. The glue's just like me, it gets stage fright as soon as the camera. <laughs> I know, Trace, I'm terrible. I'll prep all my glue, I'll make sure it's unblocked, and then seconds later, it just doesn't want to work. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. So we've got now the basis of our actual cover. So you can see we've got a three dimensional structure that's in like a triangular shape, and that's going to work perfectly. Now, if you want to make this postable, all you need to do is put a Velcro tab onto this bit. And then this will allow you to fold one in and one over, and it'll go into an envelope really well, really flat. You can see for flow stage. If you want to make a, a structure that's not going to be postable, we can glue that straight away. So let's give that bit of glue, and it can be set in while we 
doing the rest of the little bits for this. There we go, push that together. I'm going to leave that just over there now to be drying. I'm going to bring our little characters in. So I've chosen the owls for this. I've already coloured one in already, so let's get a little bit of watercolour going on these others. And get some more colour. I'm going to stick with the blue theme, so I think it makes them look really cold. I like that. And we'll just get some of that blue colour. And our little owl. We'll give him a bright blue tummy. And really bright blue eyes was his freezing look, bless him. Should have put his gloves on. And then we'll give him little blue legs. And we'll bring that dark blue up into his tummy as well. And then we'll turn him around. And we'll do this other little fellow with a coffee cup. Let's make him a little bit more vibrant. Round his head. Darker to me. I'm just going to give him really bright blue eyes as well. You could as well put some little glossy accents on the pupils that look nice. I'll just bring some of that blue in. Use the shade of the stamp as well just to help you with that. And I think um, we'll give him a bright red mug of coffee. Let's go that quick blast with a heat gun. So Roxy says, I sit mine upside down when crafting so it comes out easier. Yeah, I would, but the problem is I've cut the top off too much so it just comes out now. Just pick some of that extra so. up. Right, we'll bring our dye plates back in. Our cute little owls out. So I've got the one with a little coffee cup. Let's just line that up. This one with a lovely sign. This one, it looks so lonely, this one, doesn't it? That's, it's like it needs a friend. There we go. We'll pop that through. So, uh, Rob says, I know the hours of... Well, I think I missed some comments. Oh, well. I hope you're all um, sat in the dry at home anyway. So it's not nice weather out there, is it, today? I think we're in for it for the week, but it looks. I don't know what was on the plate, but it's picked up some little black bits, but we can still go with this, so don't worry. I don't know what that is. So we'll just have to pretend that's not there, and then on this one here, the little sign, What you could do is you can actually stamp your own sentiment in there or you can leave a message on there. So I'm just going to put Happy Christmas. From the side. Okay. You can write your own little message. It's up to you what you want to do on that. And then we're going to bring in some foam pads. Put 
put one on each of these. Bring back in our snowflake. I'll hold this up so it's a bit of an odd shape to. I'll hold it that way. And then you can see I'm just going to put these on the bottom. I'm going to make sure they don't overlap this kind of crease. And then that way, if you was doing a foldable version, it would work for you. Okay. So that's one on that side. Turn it around, put one on here. And there we go. So like I say, just put a little tea light underneath it. And you can see you've got a really nice card there. And it will flicker. I have tried it. It's just it's quite bright in the studio for you to see that. Uh, it's just a nice way of doing a um, transparent kind of look. And, and like I say, uh, actual message is hidden as well, so they can choose which side to display. It's nice, that one, isn't it? A little bit different for you. You can see it's got three sides to it. And then you've got the little message that you can put on yourself. So that's our first demonstration. So I hope you enjoy that. That's the, that's the fast one for today. The other one's going to take a little bit longer. So um, I will um, set up for the next demonstration. While we're doing that, I'm going to show you a video of some inspiration that you can make too with the um, LA Fantastic range. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. And welcome back. Um, I'm, I can see by the comments some of you enjoyed that demonstration. That was lovely. Um, I can see that some of you had a reaction to a booster, which, mm, sorry about that. At least you've had your booster, though, so you're doing what you can, aren't you? But just keep yourself um, warm and have a cup of tea. So the next demonstration in the Christmas theme, I've come up with this Christmas card using one of the elephants. It's a really bright one, this one. It's exactly my style with the bright colours. Um, so you've got the fa-la-la. Kind of sentiment, but some really nice bursts of holly leaves and the little berries, and then we've adapted our elephants. We've got a Christmas cap on, so let's show you how to make this one. So it's really quite quick to actually get the um, background for this one. So I've got, um, I think it's a five by seven blank card. I'm going to change it onto its end that way. And I've already pre-cut some striper paper to fit on there. Let's get that glued into place. So we've got a second. Level up with the base. There we go. Give that a good push down. And I've got a nice piece of white card, which I'm going to actually die cut with the sprinkles die that we've got. And this is from the Avago range. And this one, even though it was like a celebration die, really works well with this and it gives a little bit more depth to your background. Let's bring in the um, die plates. I'll give them a quick wipe as well. So let me just, um, just use this cloth down here. Yes, yeah, so they're a bit wet. I didn't want it to ruin the card stop. So I'll pop that down. Put our little panel in the center of that. Make sure I've got it. To... I'm going to run that through. Such a versatile dial, die, this one, I tell you. It's really useful. 
We were all talking about warm drinks. So we'll just pass that through. And you could do it with a bit of colour, but I think the white on this one helps the background pop in a second. So let's pop that up. You can see a really good background. I'm just going to get these little loose ones out. You can leave some in as well if you prefer, but there we go. Move it out of the way. You can see on the green it wouldn't really pop as much as it could. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it onto red, and that will really help that kind of detail shine through. So, a bit of glue. And just be careful to put the glue in the areas that there's, it's not going to seep through the holes. So, just round the edge, and then a few spots in the centre. And that'll be fine for that. You don't need more than that. Let's put that onto our red matte layer. And then I'm going to stick this on the card at a, a bit of a funny angle like that, just to give us a bit more um, kind of definition. So let's get that in place as well. Then all this can be set in then. While we do his main area. So I'm going to put just glue on that area. Give that a good push down. We've got our card blank now, which we're going to then start creating our card on. So, a bit of a quirky angle, but you know what I mean? It's a bit, it just has a bit more definition. It'll stand out on the shelf, won't it? Let's pop that over there to dry. And the next bit, what we're going to do is we're going to create some of these holly leaves that are on the original. And to do that, bring in my watercolours. I've also got my eyes ink green ink, paint, ink pad. Let's just get a large brush. I'm just going to wet this piece of card. I'm using mixed media card for this because it's, um, it's cheaper than watercolour card and it does the exact same effect that we need. So I'll give that a bit of a wet. And then I'm going to go in with these green colours. And I'm just going to just blob them around really so they're kind of like start leaking into the water. Change to a darker green. Just push that around a bit. And I quite like it dark, so I'm, I'm making sure it's not too wet, the paint mix I'm putting on. Let's use some of these other greens that we've not used yet. Just getting some good variation of all these shades. Okay, let's give that a quick blast with a gun. Ooh, where'd I put the gun? It's under here. And I love this watercolour effect, but you really get a different kind of holly leaf every time you cut one out. So I'll give that a quick blast. You can also move it around if you want to. There's a few little wet areas on them, and that's fine, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the eye zinc pad. I'm just going to put some random little marks down and give that a blast of water. And I'm just going to pick some of that up to give a little bit more depth to them colours. There you go. You can see we've got some like, little marblings going on now. So let's give that another blast off.
You could make these ahead of time as well. I mean, you could just use them at the end. Just make sure we've got all that dry enough. So that, adding the ink pad just gives a little bit more vibrancy as well. I'm just going to give my counter a quick wipe. So we don't want this ink to go on as, as card that we're making. So Roxley says, when we on it, it's same collection we're coming. Oh, secret, secrets. As soon as I can tell you, I will let you know, but it'll, it'll not be before Sandra, I promise you. Um, well, I'll find a nice little bit Oh, thank you. We all should have a Christmas hat on. I think it should be compulsory. I think you should um, put a picture of you wearing your Christmas hat while you're watching the um, studio live. So we've got our little green panel there now. And I'm going to bring in the actual die plates again. I'm going to just push those little bits off from the last demo. And then we've got the really lovely Holly dies. And these are from one of the Stamps by Me collections, the uh, Falala. Collection for it. I'm sure some of you might already have this in your stash at home. I'm using the big um, leaf dies from there. And I'm literally going to just pop them down in random places. And that way, we're going to get really nicely coloured leaves. Let's pop that through. So I had to make a dino something. So Rox had to make a dino card for a partner. You have to put a uh, picture on the Avago group, and then we can all have a look. So Roxanne, yeah, it's, you could use this for any kind of leaf. It really works. Looks really nice in um, autumnal colours as well, like your browns and your oranges. So I'll just pull them to one side. I'm going to pop it through one more time in case we need extra leaves. We'll just pop that through. And you could be quite sparing at home with this. You could really take your time to use the most of this background. Let's move that paint out of the way so we're done with that now. I feel like I want to wind it through. There you go, we'll just move them dies out of the way. You can see there we've got some lovely leaf effects, and none of them are the same. Just get this little one off. Put that to one side. So I like these little leaves, but I just think there's a little bit more detail. So I've then chose like a fine line marker. I'm going to put like a fine stitch around them. So really easy to do. And it is optional, this one. You could actually just ink the edges with an ink pad to give them a bit of definition. But I quite like the stitched effect. And you don't have to be too precise. It just gives a bit of definition. And just turn that as we go. Do a few more. Just round those little tips there. And on the little one, I'm just going to do quite light dashes. I don't want to make the pen overbearing. So a little bit thinner. There you go. So I'll leave them up there in case we need those. But you can see I've done three leaves there. And then to save a bit of time, I've already done some at home look in different shades. You can see I get a really nice mix of colours by doing this method. So let's go start creating our card. So I think what I'm going to do first of all, is I'm going to just select some of the bigger leaves and where they're going to go. So let's pop them around. Just move this out of the way. 
So I think we should have some of these at the top and some of these down here at the bottom. So a little bit more like a, like a five-pointer star kind of thing. So let's get them glued down. So I'm going to keep this first layer flat to actually um, the card. Pop that down there. I'm just gluing the base of these. I don't mind if these bits curl up, so I think it gives it more dimension. Bit of glue on these. Put that one down there. There we go. And then on these other ones, these like middle sized ones, I'm then going to start putting these in towards the centre, but I want to give them a little bit of lift as well. So I've got some foam pads. I don't need the whole foam pads, so let's just chop some of those down. I'm going to just put the little sticky bud at the end, give that a bit of a curl, with a bit of glue at the bottom. And then that way, we'll put that down. Got a bit more dimension coming. Let's do that again. A bit of glue onto the tip. I'm going to put that one there, I think. Put that down. Just gives it more dimension, doesn't it? Now some of them you could just do by hand, give them a bit of a shape. Put that one in there. Get my little bud on this one. Put that one right up to there. Give that a bit of a shape by curling it around. I like how these like standing proud. So then these little baby ones, I'm just going to go in and just put them to cover up some of this white area in the centre, really. So let's pop that one there. Let's pop that one just over there, I think. Same again, give it a bit of shape. You can hold it where you've got the glue. Mold it up while you're doing that. And then if there's some like gaps that you want to put one, you can always put extra ones in. And I think I'm going to put this one just up here. There we go. Make sure they're all in place. So we've got a kind of like a, it's almost like a star shape, isn't it, going on? And then to just to break it up, I've got a few of the little red berries. I'll just pop those out. And these are from the die set as well, but I've just cut these out to make it a little bit faster. So I'm just sure you don't want to see me cut little circles out. And then we can use these with a little bit of glue. And we can just insert them to break up that background. We'll put one up there. Let's have one under there. Sneak one up there. Let's put one right into there. And we've got two small ones left, so let's just pop them. One on there. You could also glitter these, couldn't you? Look quite nice. And one over there. So there's no kind of like exact pattern to it. I just wanted to really break that background up. And then to finish that off, I've got a lovely sentiment, the fa -la -la. I've just cut, cut that out with the black on the red background. And I think that will really pop if we put that over that holly. So let's get that into position. And then we'll get our little friend made for it. So I've already put some little um, pads on the back. I'm going to put that just across the centre. Let's put it there. Give that a good push down. And that's our holly kind of background made. So now we need to get our little character made for here. So I've already started giving them a bit of a colour. 
I'm just going to bring in the watercolours though, just so I can give them a little bit more definition. I'm just going to use a little bit of grey. I've got some mixed up here actually, so we'll use this one. I can just go in and give a little bit more definition in them areas that I want to be a bit darker. Right round his trunk. Into his tummy. His knees are always a little bit darker. Walk that down a bit more. Take that down. Drag that into his base. Same on them legs. Just to make him a little bit stand out a bit more. I'm not bothered about the hat, but we're going to replace his hat. There you go. Give that a quick blast with a gun. And then let's get that put through the die cut as well. It's a lovely little character, isn't it? Really happy. And this is from the um, Elephantastic range. So this is like a birthday hat, but we're going to make him a bit more Christmassy. I'll just get my um, bit of tape on that. Just because I don't want it to move. There we go. And just pop that through. So Rox says, give us a hint. I can't. Maybe after Santa's been. Versus aliens. I do like your guessing though, it's um it's quite insightful. <laughs> there we go, we'll just pop our little elephant out. We've got our cute little elephant now, but it's got um a birthday hat on, so we need to fix that, don't we? So, let's chop his hat off. And then what I've done ahead of time is I've made him a little Santa hat. And all I've done is made a triangle and then I've folded the end bit over so it looks like a little Santa hat. So let's get that glued onto him. Do the glue at the back. It's a really good way, this, because you can make any of your characters Christmas theme by just putting a Santa hat on them. A little bit of glue on this bit, just so I can fold it over and it'll stick where it needs to be. Just hold that down a second. There you go. So you can see he's got a little Santa hat on now. Looks very festive, ready for Christmas. And I just put a little bit of white card on it as well to make the um, kind of like fur trim. So I'll just put a few pads on the back of him. Just move them leaves out of the way. And I think we're going to put him just down here in the bottom of this card as if he's actually saying follow or I think I said too many lies then. And there you go. Just a really bright, easy Christmas card using that lovely elephant. And you can see we've just made him very Christmassy. He doesn't have to be birthday orientated. The list is up. So Elaine says she'll not find this page again, not take it at all. Well, if you're on YouTube, Elaine, I don't you know, but if you click, um, click the subscribe link, you'll get a notification before we go live, and then you can press that link and it'll activate it for you. So that might help you a little bit if you haven't already done that. So let's bring in the other demo that we did. So we've got two quirky demos there. You've got one that's a tea light cover, and you've got a nice little Christmas card. So hopefully you enjoyed those. Someone's put on a question. Can someone tell me how to clean the stamps when you use the Ising embossing slurring iron? That's 
I just, I just use um, like a baby wipe me to clean mine and it's fine. I mean, some of them may stain, but they don't, it doesn't transfer. So I, I hope, hope that answers your question, Carol. Right, so that's us two demonstrations for this week. Just a quick recap on the winner that won the birthday celebration prize worth £150. That was Sharon Williams from Tunbridge. So if you drop me a line, if you, um, once you've known this, or if you know her, please tag her in this. Because I'm sure she'll be over the moon to win such a, a great prize before Christmas. Um, and I'm sure you've enjoyed today's de demonstrations. I can see from your comments you have. So that's been brilliant. So until next week then, I will see you next Monday at the same time at one o'clock and we'll get some more Christmas demonstrations there. Might even change me out, you know. So until then, I'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.